Hello, uh, I am the one expressing as Sean. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to formulate how to ask this question because today the calls have been really, uh, they've answered a lot of the question that I'm asking, I think. Uh, a little backstory in like 2014, I was in a very depressive episode and I started reading Eckhart Tolle's uh, work and Deepak Chopra. And then during the pandemic, I came across your videos and I've been kind of practicing a little bit at a time over the years. And um, I've said this in past posts that I've, I, I'm, a, I'm a therapist and I also deal with health anxiety. And I've always, I identify with the body so much and, and I don't want to. Um, and about a month ago, I fell into this just wonderful piece uh, that I, that the piece that I've been searching for. And um, it lasted for a while and it was, uh, just there was nothing bothering me. I was very um, <clears throat> just peaceful, I guess I would say. And um, about three weeks ago, I landed up in the hospital with uh, with uh, sepsis, with an infection that um, I was only there for a few days. We caught it in time. But now that I'm out of the hospital, you know, from a psychotherapy standpoint, I feel like I have PTSD. Right. And that's what what I'm experiencing. I know that's not true. Yet I am struggling so hard with getting back to that place of not identifying with my body. Mm. And I know intellectually even and, and, and I feel in certain areas that what I'm experiencing is uh, is not real. Yet. I feel like my ego is working double time saying, oh, hell no, I'm going to stay in control as much as I can. And I'm going to keep you in fear as much as I can. And so I, my question, I guess, outside of what you've said already today, and maybe I just need to hear it again, is how do I get past this severe event in my life where I'm still having some symptoms and not identify with my body? if that makes sense. Certainly, yeah. I love your Buddha banner in the background, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so it sounds, Sean, like you had a big breakthrough in your awareness, finding that the peace of God for a solid month or whatever. And I, I think what really happens is that when we are in those states before the, the entirety of the default mode network, the separate self, the ego has been dissolved or transcended. It's, it's like a mind of its own. It's like a separate intelligence existing in the mind that when we're in those states, uh, th this is what seems to be true for me in my experience. I don't know if this is ex the fact of the matter, but it seems like the ego is in the background studying our state of peace and, and scheming and saying, how can I break through this wall of peace? He's so disidentified He's so at one with reality. What illusion will get him back on the fish hook again? You know what I mean? And it, it retreats for a while and it comes back. Um, Jesus said this uh, when casting out evil spirits. He said, when an evil spirit is cast out, it goes into the barren land and finds seven more demons, more evil than itself, and then comes back again. I think that's an analogy for what the ego does is like, you're transcending its thought system piece by piece. And so it's digging a little bit deeper into the toolbox to go, all right, what haven't I thrown at this guy that will really get him? And an experience like uh, having a, a infection that sends you to the hospital and he goes, whoa, hey buddy, you were real close to dying there, weren't you? I bet you were afraid, weren't you? Oh, maybe a little bit. Oh, ah, you were, so you still believe you're the body. And it's, it's just yeah. talking to you, trying to get you back on the fish hook again, because you know what? I bet you anything, if you, let's say that the infection wasn't caught early enough and it was the way that your, your soul chose to leave this incarnation, I bet you anything, Sean, you'd be on that deathbed, you know, moments before your death, glowing with the acceptance and the knowing that I am an eternal being in heaven. You would have had no fear of death at all, but it's because you escaped death that the ego tries to now make a story out of it, make a tattoo out of it, 
and drag you back into body consciousness. So the good news is this is just one layer deeper. You're now able to go to transcend that thought system altogether. Uh, I've said this before, how the ego, it, it doesn't use its reserves until it really has to. Because every thought ego thinks, every, every amount of energy it throws at awareness to try and capture awareness again, it's losing energy when it's doing that, right? It doesn't have an infinite supply because it's separate. You have the infinite supply. You have infinite supply of truth and awareness. Ego has a limited supply of illusion and deception. So it's going to be very conservative about what it uses on you unless it's getting down to those final moments where it has to do whatever it takes to get you back on that fish hook again to believe you're a body because it's getting burnt up. You know, you're, you're transcending it. It feels itself dying in you. And it goes, ah, like, what's the worst thing I could think that will get his attention? And that was for me why I struggled with depression for many years was it was like those bottom of the barrel, like kitchen sink, last ditch effort. What's the worst thought I can think? Suicide, that's it. You're suicidal, aren't you? Yeah, life's hopeless, isn't it? And I, I suffered from those thoughts for a long time. They got me back on the fish hook until I realized this is just the last thought ego has in its arsenal that I haven't transcended. Because if ego says anything else to me, it has no effect. Like I've seen through those illusions, but this one still gets me. So I actually want to keep meeting this thought, this idea, whatever the story is. I want to keep meeting it with truth and love and surrender until it's dissolved. Every time I feel that fear, the trauma come back up, I want to meet it with love even more because, you know, trauma is just the belief in separation. Ultimately, you can't yeah. be traumatized unless you think you're separate. And when there is a traumatic experience that we wish to deny, like almost dying, then it gets buried in the unconscious. And then there will be projection of the denied experience, right? In order to keep you safe from encountering it again. So when that feeling of fear, the reliving of that trauma, like you described, expresses, that's when you have the best opportunity to transcend it. That's when the mole is out of the hole and you get to whack the mole with the hammer, right? When, when the mole's not out, you whack and you don't hit anything. You get zero points, right? When the ego comes out of its hole and the fear and the whatever is there, then you say, thank you, ego. I'd love to have a conversation about this with you, right? Can I ever die? Can I be a body? Am I the body? And in that way, when we bring those thoughts to inquiry, when we feel the fear, that's when we're doing the most damage to the ego's thought system. And you'll find it doesn't want to hang out and have that conversation very long with you when you're wielding the sword of truth, right? It only wants to talk with you when you're in the story and, you know, buying what the ego is selling. So I love a certain line that the Course says when it talks about the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the Course says that the Holy Spirit is the principle in us that leads us into truth. And so we just ask Holy Spirit to show us. But then it goes on to say in one passage, it says, unless you look with him, he cannot see. Unless you look with Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit cannot see. see. Which ultimately means, right, you are the Holy Spirit. You are the voice of truth. So we want to look right into the face of those illusions, those stories. And I know I'm not telling you something you don't know. But to hear it from a deeper place, maybe, yeah. you want to get excited. I can't wait for that thought to surface again so I can meet it with love. Because when we have that loving, truthful conversation with those stories and those fears, that's what gives the ego the motivation to say, okay, I actually feel pretty safe about dying now. Like that's the final hand that, that love stretches out to the ego that the ego will finally take love's hand and say, ah, there is nothing to fear about death. I can't die. Therefore, I'm not afraid. Therefore, there's no ego. Without fear, there's no ego. Just keep extending that hand, right? Keep reaching that hand out to your greatest fear and say, ah, I know you're afraid, ego, of dying from sepsis, of being a body, but here's what's true. You cannot die. You are eternal. That's what love says. And eventually, ego is going to take that hand, right? Thank you. That, that really helps.
Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Blessed to hear it, brother. Thank you for your question.